because I want to talk about detox now. And this is really an overview. This is something you could go on and on about, too. But I have this, well, it's not up there, is it? How do I get that one up there? Oh, we may have to get our techie guy in here. Oh, I know. F5, right? <laughs> what does it say? Well, well, I think you can just follow along in your notes there, because there, this is, doesn't have a lot of. Oh wait, maybe this will do it. That's good enough. Get our fellow to come help us. I, but we can start. Just follow along in your notes, because I don't have a lot of illustrations in this. So the first one is the colon cleanse, and actually when you're, um, when you're starting out to cleanse the body, the colon's the first place to get going good because the stuff goes out through the colon, you know, and um, it comes in through the liver and gets dumped into the colon. Uh, and a lot of people, you know, they may think their bowels move well, but there can still be a lot of stuff built up in the um, in the bowels. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. The colon cleanse that I did with my patients was just to, first of all, you need to get your bowels moving well, and that's just magnesium. Just keep taking more magnesium until your bowels move. Um, let me start. There it is. Yay. So magnesium to bowel tolerance, that means keep taking more until you get two or three bowel movements a day. And then if you go into diarrhea, you need to cut back a little bit. One of my patients had to take 56 magnesium capsules to get in a day, in one day, to get her bowels moving. And then, and then finally she could cut back. Okay, it's good. And then a fiber is good, like psyllium husk or powder, or um, guar gum or oat bran any of those. And then bentonite is a clay that um, absorbs toxins. And so we usually have people do, do like 16 ounces of water with the psyllium in there and the bentonite and blend it up and drink it, which doesn't taste really great. But my sister developed, she put some grapefruit juice in it and frozen strawberries and blended it up that way. And she thought it was good that way. And then some kind of probiotic is a part of that program. Um, now, let's go to, how do you, when do you take, it's not advancing for me. Well, you may have to go back to the outline. I don't know why it's not advancing for me. Up there. The Maybe. <coughs> there we go. Um, so you need to drink so much water with this that you want to keep it away from meals, because a lot of water will interfere with di your digestive enzymes, dilute them too much. And so we said at least one hour before meals or two hours afterwards. And the other thing is keep it several hours away from bedtime, like maybe around four, so you're not up peeing all night. Um, so a lot of times, get up, take it first thing, then take your second dose at three or four. Okay, eat more cultured food. So, um, there's different pro probiotics in different cultured foods, so that yogurt has like a bacterial culture, and Bravo yogurt is more a mix of yogurt organisms and kefir organisms. Kombucha, have any of you guys, it's, it's getting pretty popular, you can buy it in stores, have you guys tried it? Yeah, it's a fermented tea, and it, it, it develops that mushroom on top of it. It looks gross when you're culturing it. 
but um, it has a good mix of organisms. And then NATO is um, fermented so soybeans, but make sure they're non-GMO. Um, kefir uh, is a different bacteria. You can culture that in milk or water. Kefir was actually, I started with the water kefir, and you actually have to use sugar to culture it. Well, when I started that, uh, drinking kefir, I couldn't <coughs> eat table sugar at all. I mean, not even a trace. It would make me feel horrible. And then, um, you know, several months later, I ate something that had a little bit of sugar, and I thought, hey, I feel okay. Um, I mean, a trace before would have made me feel horrible. And so I got to thinking back, and I thought, the kefir, it's, now I have those organisms in my gut that help digest the sugar, and I can handle it. Not that I eat it, but if it's a trace in something, it doesn't bother me now. Cultured vegetables like kimchi, there's, you, can, you can culture a lot of vegetables different ways. And then fermented grains, coconut water is mineral rich, and um, when you culture meat, it breaks down those proteins, so um, the organisms break down the proteins so they're easier to digest and assimilate. Most of us don't eat cultured meat, I know, but, um, and some cultures they do, and they love it. <laughs> so eat cultured food two to three times a day. Start with real small amounts, like a teaspoon or two, because there's a war going on in your gut a lot of times when you get the good guys in there and you might get a lot of gas. Um, and then eat a variety of cultured foods daily. And that helps get all those different kinds of good, good guys in your gut. So why do we want those organisms in our gut? Well, they help detoxify us. They help pull out the toxic metals and other contaminants. And they stimulate the immune system. Remember, it's 80% of your immune system's in the gut, and it interacts with the, with the organisms in your gut. And it definitely helps restore proper digestion and assimilation. The, uh, Dr. Ruggiero developed uh, Bravo Yogurt because he was working with autistic kids, and they all have horrible gut problems. And they digest when they, they can't fully digest casein, the milk protein, or gluten from wheat and the, those particles go into their bloodstream and up to their brains and cause havoc in their brains. That's, that's the reason some of them are having so much trouble. And remember the glyphosate makes their brains leaky too. So, um, so those abnormal molecules go into their brains really easily. Well they clean up their diet, most of them are taken off of dairy and wheat, but then at a certain point, they started adding this raw yogurt, one teaspoon at a time. And gradually, they got those kids' guts restored, and that was one of the steps to helping them improve. And actually, they're getting a lot of good results with autism now, but it takes a lot of things going on to do it. Um, and it helps heal the, the enterocytes, which are those cells that, that line your gut. So that's just some, uh, some links to some things for cultured food. And then castor oil packs. They're kind of fun. You can uh, either rub castor oil, get an organic castor oil, on your right upper quadrant, under your rib cage on the right there, put a piece of felt on it, then a piece of uh, like saran wrap or plastics so you don't get the oil all over everything. Um, and then you put a hot water bottle on your tummy. And um, it helps get the toxins out of the liver and get the lymphatics going well. Just, you know, be careful, don't burn yourself. Um, now, Epsom salts baths. I've been living in Epsom salts baths <laughs> for about a year. Um, how many of you guys have done Epsom salts baths? Okay, so you put hot, you know, hot water, don't burn yourself again, but nice hot water in your tub, add about 
two cups of Epsom salts. You can put essential oils in there like lavender or something like that if you want to. And then you just soak in it. This, I, it's always said 14 minutes, but I usually soak longer than that. Um, but this is like dialysis across your skin. Epsom salts is magnesium sulfate. <coughs> so magnesium, most of us are low in magnesium just because of our diets and because our food's been depleted in it, of it because of the way things are farmed now with artificial fer fertilizers. So magnesium can get in, sulfate can get in, sulfur, and sulfur of that mineral. Magnesium is good at loosening up the toxins and getting them going out of your cells and out of your body. And sulfur is good at tying up the toxins so the toxins don't make you feel so bad when they're coming out. Um, because when toxins are inside the cell, they're interfering with your cellular mechanisms. So it's bringing your energy down. They may even eventually cause damage that leads to cancer. But when they come outside the cell, they get back in contact with the nerves because the nerves end outside the cell. So when they're back in contact with nerves, they cause yucky stuff. So nausea, pain, headache, um, you know, muscle cramps, whatever. Um, so anyway, this is a way to help get toxins out through your skin. and. Um, I find it really relaxes me and I sleep better and I don't have to get up as, to pee as much as I want to do it. Skin brushing is great too. Um, that kind of shows a brush. I, I use a loofah sponge, or it's just a sponge. But basically, you just brush towards your lower abdomen. It's how the lymphatics flow in your body. So about four strokes everywhere and do this before it's good to do it before your Epsom salts bath and from the feet and legs you stroke up to the lower abdomen all right um, so it helps the lymphatic circulation and uh, now it's good to support the liver and kidneys and it takes time to detox so they suggest Slowly working on liver kidney support for a couple months before you try tissue support. Um, and then these are just foods that uh, are good for the liver. Actually, olive oil and lemon juice will help the liver dump out toxins. So will beets. Uh, milk thistle is known to help the liver. Uh, and then these are the other herbs that do it. Uh, these are just some examples of supplements you can get. These happen to come from Vitacost, but I just thought these were a, a good blend of support for the liver. And they have one for kidney too, which has a lot of stuff that's known to be good for the kidney in it. So, um, and then there's the liver gall butter flesh, and we just don't have time to go into these two tonight, so if you want to go to my website and, and read about it, you can find out how to do it. But the first, in 1980, in the 1980s, one of my patients came to me and had done a liver gallbladder flush. I didn't know a thing about it. And um, she had dumped out so many gallstones and the pain in her right upper quadrant that she had had for years and years and years went away. So you do dump out gallstones. You can get rid of gallstones that way. Um, chlorella, these are detox supplements. Chlorella binds toxins, takes them out through the bowel. Chlorella is also a green food, so you got to get a lot of nutrients from it. Um, some people don't do so well on chlorella. It gives them a little diarrhea or something, so then activated charcoal. Another uh, way to uh, absorb the toxins. <coughs> MSM is nutritional sulfur. Uh, 500 to 1,000 milligrams twice per day is usually a good thing to do. And then oral electrolytes to replace your minerals. Uh, and again, what we're trying to do is get the magnesium. Magnesium is a gatekeeper here that gets things in and out. See, this is a neat diagram of that cell membrane with the, the, the fats facing out and facing in the cell, and then you have water molecules in between, and so you can absorb fat or water through there. Um, 
But it, this is just, again, showing you how important that cell membrane is and how important it is to get the toxins out so, those, so you can get the nutrients in. So, and I just briefly, I did chelation in my practice. It brings out toxic metals. People sat uh, in my office for three hours with an IV in their arm, and we induced EDTA, which grabbed the toxic metals and pulled them out of the urine, and we could prove it did that by testing the urine after 10 chelations and 20 chelations and 30 chelations to see what they were still pulling out. And, and diabetics, heart, people who had heart disease, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes were the main ones that came, although it can help a lot of other things, but that was what it was known for at the time. Um, now, um, since I closed my practice, I, I found out that rectal administration of EDTA works really well too, maybe even better. And um, it's a lot more comfortable, a lot cheaper, and you don't have to travel anywhere to get it. Um, and you can get the suppositories online. Um, so I wanted to, this, these are people who have diabetic ulcers. You know, why do they have those? They don't have blood flow to those areas. Their, their cells can't get oxygen, they can't get nutrients. And so we had two men that came to us with diabetic ulcers, not as bad as these. But after chelation, there's actually, this was just showing the healing from, um, from the diabetic ulcers in the process, but theirs actually went healed totally. And one of the fellas, called back to talk to my receptionist three months later about something. And um, he said, oh, by the way, I, I, my, my eyesight improved so much, I got my driver's license back. So, so that, was really, that was really cool because it healed those uh, vessels in his retina, right? So he could see better. Okay. Um, so those, those are some of the, I have a whole detox tab on my website where you can read more about that. Now, how are you guys doing? Are we holding out okay? Because this is the, we're getting to the really exciting stuff and I'm gonna have to go through it fast. All the things we talked about, really important. They really need to be implemented. But, how would you like to shorten the time to have fun, to do it in a luxurious way, to detox and reverse diabetes. And this is the Hockett ozone sauna that we have at our spa. 